Well, the students who are taking the paper two chemistry exam, listen to those 20 frequently asked questions that are likely to appear in your exam. Let's start with metals. Transition metals have high melting point, high density, and colored compounds. Moving down group one in the periodic table, the melting point decreases and reactivity increases. Opposite applies to group seven or halogens, where the melting point increases and reactivity decreases. Also, color intensity increases as you move down. When reactive metals like sodium, potassium, or calcium react with water, they form hydrogen and metal hydroxide. On the other hand, less reactive metals react with steam and produce both metal oxide and hydrogen. Metals above carbon in reactivity series, such as aluminium, are extracted by electrolysis. Metals below carbon are extracted by reducing them with carbon. Aluminium has low density, that's why it's used for airplane bodies. It's also covered with a layer of its oxide, that's why it's used for food containers. During galvanization and sacrificial protection, metals that are more reactive than iron, such as magnesium or zinc, are oxidized, while the iron remains intact. When iron rusts, it consumes 21% of the air, that is the percentage of oxygen. Alloys like steel are harder than metals because they have atoms of different sizes. Moving to the last topic about organic chemistry. When alcohols are oxidized with potassium manganese, they produce carboxylic acids. Production of alcohol by fermentation has two great advantages. First, it uses renewable resources, that is glucose. Second, it saves energy because it's run at low temperature. The two disadvantages of fermentation is that it's a slow batch process and the alcohol produced this way is impure. Opposite applies to the production of alcohol by hydration. Esters are made by the condensation reaction of alcohols and carboxylic acids. The number of carbons in an ester is the total number of carbons in the alcohol plus the carboxylic acids. There are two ways to produce polymers. First, it's addition. That's when an alkene produces only one product, and that is the polymer. The second method of making polymers is by condensation. This time, two products are formed, the polymer and the molecule of water. That's it for today. Make sure that you've watched the two previous videos, and I wish you all best of luck.